Well, I'm back again in my uh, happy place, my garage, with my cars, and going out last weekend here in Florida, I realized that, well, spring is over, summer is here, and for the rest of you, summer is coming up very quickly, you'll have it soon enough, and one of the things that a lot of people debate, ask questions about, just seem kind of confused because there's lots of answers and a lot more questions, is cooling in your car. This is one of the most important things besides keeping oil in it to make sure that you don't have something catastrophic happen. So with that, I'm going to kind of explain my theory on keeping especially your muscle car cool and, and this really relates to something that's semi-stock like my engine and my charger which is 30 over hotter cam you know 10 and a half one compression which is was normal for a pre-70 340 so nothing outrageous very streetable and has air conditioning so one of the big things you see on forums is about thermostats. I mean, that literally is the first thing that always gets brought up with a cooling issue. And a lot of times people are like, oh, you need to run a 160 in that. No, you need to run a 180 in that. Oh, no, you can't run a 195 in that. Yes and no. When these cars were designed, they came with a 195 thermostat from the factory. And that was done to help get the engine up to temperature to make it run better. Gasoline needs to be vaporized by heat. Yeah, because otherwise you just have water, you just have gasoline droplets, but it needs to be carried with the air into the cylinders, being a carburetor does all the mixing up on top of the intake plenum. And then the intake runners are warmed and then that helps the gas, you know, the, the mist of fuel get into the cylinder and fire properly. So you need to have heat in your engine. Not having any heat in your engine will make it run poorly. Hence when it's cold and you have, you know, when it's cold and you don't have a choke, the car doesn't run it's because well nothing's hot and it's unable to make the gas stay in suspension and that's why you use a choke to richen it up to the point where it has to run because there's so much less air and so much fuel it's going to actually burn the one thing about thermostats and I'm going to start there because this is where everybody is on a cast iron head, cast iron block car with a known good radiator, known good cooling system, you really should run a 195. Bar none, you should run a 195 and this is why. You want the fluid to stay in the radiator as long as possible. And then you want it when it gets up to temperature you want it to cycle. So you want it to drop below the thermostat so it closes partially, even a little bit, to slow the water down inside the radiator because it's the contact of the liquid with the metal that the transfers the heat. And the longer it can contact, the more heat it can draw out of the liquid. Very, very important. That's why if you run a 160, which I would never recommend, that's the one I would, I can't even make an argument for because 160 is barely up to operating temperature in these engines. And I'm talking about cast iron, cast iron. Even aluminum cast iron or aluminum, aluminum, 160 is just too low and you're not going to get proper transfer with that. So that I mean that that's that's the first thing I've figured out after years of 
making sure that my car can run when it's 95 degrees outside with 50% humidity and have my air conditioning on. Kind of important. The next part of this conundrum is the water pump because these two things kind of go hand in hand. Now on Chrysler's, and I know I'm only using Chrysler's as an example because well, I know them. I've had this one for 30 something years. I've been working on them for longer. The water pump came in two flavors. It came in an eight blade and a six blade. Now, conventional thinking would say, oh, the eight blades for air conditioning. Tis not. The eight blade is not for air conditioning. The, eight, eight, the six blade is to move the water slower. That's the other unconventional wisdom part of keeping your engine cool. You want the water to move slow. Think about this contact time with your radiator. You need to have it moving slow through there. And you need to have it be able to transfer the heat out. So that's kind of tip two that I've learned and put into practice. My car runs at 195. Air on, air off. Drive down the highway, off. The only time it gets hot, you know, stay in it for a while, you know, get a little hot dog and It'll go up a little bit, and then it comes right back down. Maybe sitting on a light for a really long time with the air on, it'll go up a little bit, drive off, drops right back down. And that's because this cooling system's working in harmony. The third thing about this is the radiator cap. Make sure it's good. This makes a whole difference in the world because it makes pressure in your system. Pressure is good and bad. It's bad because it puts a lot of stress on the system. I mean, it, 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 it's what helps cause leaks to happen. It also helps you find leaks, but it makes them happen. And most muscle car caps are 16 pounds, like this one says 16. The thing is, you have to test it, and I have a video here that shows you how to test the cap. And honestly, Testing the cap is pretty important because you want to make sure that it's holding pressure because every, every what is it, four pounds is like 12 degrees of temperature and that, uh, that for the fluid to boil. And if you're running a 50-50 mix, which you should be, you know, that, that starts at like 240. So then if you can add 40 degrees to that, Wow, 280 before it turns to steam. You don't ever want to get there, but you want to have the leeway just in case. And having good pressure in the system is very important. That is a big, big deal. And the last part uh, is your fan. Do never, ever, ever use a flex fan. All they're good about doing is pulling the front nose off a water pump. They don't do anything else. Fans come in two flavors. They come in a fixed fan that goes inside the shroud where it always rotates the same speed as the engine no matter what. It's about the same speed as the engine. And the other is a clutch style fan, which what this BMW has. And I'll show both of them. You know, most muscle cars came with a, well, at least the Chrysler ones, came with a clutch style fan. My 318 air conditioning car came with a fixed fan. Don't know. But it did. There's two parts with the fan that are very important. A, that it, you have a fan shroud. Second part, is that fan shroud has about half the fan sticking in and out of it. You know, not too deep into it to cause calvocation issues, but not too far out that it doesn't make a suction area when you're sitting still, because that's quite important. So that that's another, that's like the last little piece of trying to keep your car cool in the summertime. And of course, here's the bonus one. The bonus is the type of coolant you should be using. The days of just using green, I think, are over at this point. 
it, it, it's very, it becomes very caustic. It will eat, it'll eat aluminum. It will just do all sorts of really weird things inside your engine. And I learned years ago, working at BMW, they have stuff called BMW Blue. It's low in phosphorus. And it actually has no phosphorus. And, you know, like I use a GO5 uh, coolant. And that's what I use in my charger. And I've noticed no uh, of the typical wear stuff that you used to see with the regular green coolant. I, I would highly recommend using that and using 50-50 water because the water helps the coolant to actually do something. It's antifreeze and coolant. I don't even care about the antifreeze part because I'm in Florida. It doesn't freeze. But if you have, if you live anywhere north of Mason-Dixon line, yes, you should have antifreeze and coolant and make sure it's 50-50 so you have maximum protection and make sure it's phosphorus free. So you keep your stuff from getting all eaten up. So, you know, that's kind of my quick little tips on helping to cool during the summer. I'd love to hear your comments on this because yeah, everybody has an opinion on this thing. I just, this is what has actually worked very well for me in both my cars. They have different approaches, but you know, you need know, one of them run hot, you know, and none of them have an issue just sitting idling with the air conditioning on. Okay, let's do a quick tour of the components that are part of your cooling system. So, the first one, of course, is the radiator. Let me get, how we get some light not in our face. The first one is the radiator. And then, of course, your radiator cap, which is pressure, the pressurization of it. Down there is the water pump. Usually has the pulley on it for it. That goes to our next big component, the fan. As you see, uh, this is a 318 fan, and it's just a little side thing. This is a 318 fan, and 318s sit about an inch forward uh, in the engine bay in a 340. So I had to put a little extra space here, but you see I have it about half in, half out. So you have your fan inside your, inside your shroud. And then down there at the bottom of that hose is where your thermostat housing is. And then you run back this way. And there in there is your heater core, which is, of course, a piece of your cooling system. So let's go take a look at a clutch style fan because that's what my BMW runs. Everything else is fairly the same on that, but you'll see the difference with the clutch fan. Okay, so here is the other style of cooling fan. And at the back of it, you see the, those metal fins on there. Well, those metal fins are a clutch. And there's a fluid in there that when it gets up to temperature about 160 to 180, somewhere in there with the air, you know, hot air flowing over it, it locks it up and makes the fan spin at the speed of the water pump it's attached to, usually about engine speed. Uh, so what happens with those, if they stop working, they don't. They actually don't move any air because they're just kind of freewheeling. So they're not really sucking air through the radiator. And the way to test that is to take a piece of newspaper uh, you know, roll it up like one little section of the newspaper, roll it up, and then just kind of tap into the blades while the car is running after it's been running for a while and it's hot. Put it in there, and if those blades stop, it's bad. If they don't stop, it's still good. Very simple way to check the uh, check your clutch fan. And of course, this car has two temperature sensors because it's modern. One is actually for the gauge cluster, and one is actually for the computer to tell it what to do. Because engines need to be to have temperature, and on modern cars or anything that has a computer in it, the computer wants to know how hot the engine is. Once it reaches an operating temperature, which this car is 180 to 185 degrees, then it will give it full uh, advance and you know full mixture. So, 
So that's kind of a rundown. Let's get back to the rest of the video. You know, I, I mean, my, my solution is only really valid for stocker engines and cars that have good airflow, like a Superbird or a Daytona, anything that's aero, Corvettes. You're going to have to do a little bit more because if you don't get a good airflow, it doesn't matter what else you do in there because the airflow is king and it's going to make it very, very hard. With a lot of those cars, actually, an electric fan will help immensely on that because it pulls harder and faster than you can with a fan that's powered by the belt, you know, running at engine speed. Well, a little bit faster in engine speed, so it's really not moving as fast as a high velocity electric fan. And those are, and of course, if you have anything that has very high compression, like 13 to 1, or it's very overboard, 60 over, aluminum heads, aluminum block, you really need to be cognizant of cooling, and you're would you're going to need to have a bigger radiator to handle that. And also with anything aluminum, because the BMW has like a 180. I would go 180 in that just because aluminum is good at dispersing the heat anyway. So you'll actually, you'll stay in that range. Cast iron is heat soaks. So that's why 195, I feel, is better for all cast iron. But for an aluminum, I definitely would want to have it so it's a little lower and the aluminum will help it stay in that range because it also is very good at shedding heat and not retaining it. So there's where we are with, you know, trying to keep your engines cool during these summer months. I know up in the north, you'll have a few weeks of it being, well, brutally hot. Well, mine's just started and it's going to go to October. But, you know, with these little things you can do and also doing the maintenance and making sure everything's not out of shape, make sure there's no leaks, make sure everything's clean. You should be very happy with your cooling in your car. And I really hope you got something out of this. If you did, please like it, subscribe, get in comment, and then share it. Because you know you have you, you should want to take out your classic car because you're gonna make someone's day and it could probably be your own. And I'll catch you down the road.